Today, we will have a new coding session together with Lina from Toucan Protocol. During the call, we will redeem, retire, and list records of tokenized carbon credits. Let's jump on the call. Hi, Lina. Thank you so much for joining a new coding session. Today, we will chat about how we can build a new climate positive DAP. But before, please introduce yourself and tell us how did you get interested into working in climate initiative projects? Hi, Nesta. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Lina, developer advocate for Toucan and Silo. Before joining Toucan, I was working in diversifying the Web3 space by creating a global community for female and non-binary developers. Becoming a developer advocate for Toucan was kind of a natural development for me from there, as climate change reinforces economic, social and racial conditions. And making climate tech accessible and inclusive is an important step towards working against climate change. So I'm very happy that I can support Tukan and Silo in working towards the shared goal. That's an awesome organic path. Well, what if you tell us now more about what Tukan is and what pain point it solves in the ecosystem? Sure. So Tukan is an infrastructure provider. And our products allow people and organizations to tokenize environmental assets, for example, carbon credits, and also to trade them without friction and to use them in a wide range of applications. So in its core, our infrastructure can be described as software that enables digital and more efficient environmental asset markets. For our users, we have three building blocks. First of all, the token carbon bridge, where you can tokenize your carbon credits. This makes carbon credits more accessible to buy and to trade and also to build with, without the need to rely on middlemen or carbon brokers. And the second building block is the Open Climate Registry, which is a transparent and neutral database that stores information on all carbon credits that have been tokenized or exist as tokens. And this is a really great upgrade to in transparent carbon credit registries, retirement processes, net zero claims, and also difficult price discoveries. And the last building blocks are our token carbon pools. And these pools actually solve liquidity issues with carbon markets. They hold tokenized carbon credits with similar attributes like methodology or vintage. And everyone can deposit their tokenized carbon credits into these pools, provided that the attributes match the pool filtering criteria. Awesome. Lina, to go deeper into this, what can developers do with these building blocks that you mentioned? Great question, Esther. So token tools make it way easier to buy and to sell carbon credits. So you can create all different kinds of applications like marketplaces for smaller and bigger buyers, or you can create climate positive apps where emissions automatically trigger the retirement of the equivalent of carbon tons. And companies can make way better net zero claims as now the data is transparently accessible for everybody. So everybody can access the data of which carbon credits you retired that belong to which projects. Great. Thank you for those use cases. So Lina, what if we jump to the code and start to create our climate initiative DAP? Yes, let's do it. But before we start, I want to say one thing. This technology is meant to compensate for unavoidable emission and should not set you free of your responsibility to care for the environment. So let's do it. Yay. So Lina, what are we going to be building today? Sure, Nesta. So we are going to build a climate positive app. For that, we will use Silo Composer to quick start a Web3 front end app and install token SDK, we will get NCTs, carbon pool tokens, redeem them for tokenized carbon credits, and then retire those. In the end, we will also build a page where we just get all user retirements from through querying the subgraph. So let's get started. Okay, so we have created first our DAP application, just one package, the React web package from Solo Composer. Then we can go to the package that we're going to be working on. What are we going to do next? Perfect. Now we are here. What we're going to do now is to install the Token SDK. 
Jan at Tukum dash SDK. Cool. Now you can go and open your index.tsx file. What we're going to do now is first we want to import the token clients right in the first line. Import token client from token SDK. Okay. okay. And then you can just create a new instance of this, of the token client. Okay, cool. So now we create a new instance of the token client and uh, we're going to call that. Now we're going to initialize the token client. We could just call it token and it takes three arguments. Only the first one is obligatory. The other two ones, as you can see, the provider and the signer, you can just set later also. I will show you how. So first we want to set the network and then we will use the provider and signer provided by Wagmi library. So you can import use provider and use signer from Wagmi. Provider you can already input as a second argument, but for the signer you have to first create it and then later set it because in case it is not yet, it does not exist when the wallet is not connected, you will get an error. So the provider we can already input, but the signer we have to set afterwards after we check if it exists. Yes, perfect. You check the signer if the signer exists, and then we can say token dot set signer. Cool. Now we have our client, and now we can get started with calling some functions. So the first thing that we're gonna do now is we're gonna redeem a pool token, like a nature carbon ton for carbon token, a TCO2 token. We will need to get nature carbon token tons. So for that, let's go to the token faucet. When you get the tokens in the faucet, make sure you also have silo to pay the gas because this is a withdrawal. You will have to pay fees. Got it. Here you see different tokens. As I already said, there's like TCO2 tokens, BCT, base carbon ton, and nature carbon tons. We will use nature carbon tons as they reference credits that are developed with nature-based methodologies like reforestation in initiatives and with vintages from 2012 onwards. Also, you wouldn't have TCO2 tokens if you would ha not have had carbon credits from a traditional registry before and tokenize them through our bridge or you already redeemed pool tokens Wait. if you build your app you will have to get these pool tokens from ubiswap a dex built on silo okay we have our tokens what is next perfect so let's go back to our code and redeem these tokens so let's first let's create a function that we're going to call redeem pool token it's going to be an async function with low return value. And here we can first store the return value of the function that we're going to call in a variable that we call redeem token address. Await token dot redeem auto two. Could you explain what is the difference between redeem yeah. auto two and redeem many? Yes, of course. So redeem auto automatically redeems your pool tokens for the lowest ranked. And it, with redeem many, you can actually choose which tokens you want to redeem your pool tokens for, like which carbon credits the token should represent. So there we have the function get score TCO2s where you can get the lowest ranked in position zero and the highest ranked at the end of the length of the array or you can research the token characteristics and then make a choice not on the highest rank but on the country the project is based that created this carbon credit Got it. so there's a lot of opportunities and options that you can build like specify for your application in this tutorial we'll just use redeem auto 2 to summarize redeem many gives, gives you the opportunity to redeem the nct's for tco2s that you have selected redeem auto 2 will automatically redeem them for the lowest rank tokens and you would choose redeem auto 2 instead of redeem auto if you want to use the return value of the function Function. So now we want to, as we already got NCTs, we're going to input the pool symbol NCT here as first argument and as second. Yeah, you, you can also see here, you only have two choices. And you can, as you can see, 
the input is uh, the amount of tons we want to retire and it's a big number so we need to use path ether and we're just going to retire one ton right now important to know here is you cannot redeem less than one ton of urban pool tokens now we also want to of course store this value in a state so we can use it later so let's create a state that we call that we're going to call tco2 address perfect and so in the function we're going to check if we have a redeem token address then we're going to set the tco2 address to redeem token address position zero and take the address out of that from that perfect and now let's get out your awesome Sealer design nesta <laughs> okay so we're gonna create one button i already have a class for cell yeah. style buttons uh, let's call it test redeem yes Let's start the app. Okay, we see here that we are connected with our wallet that has our NCT token and also have some cello balance. So now we're gonna try to redeem. What is gonna happen now? So now we can check the transaction first in the Silo Explorer. And we can see we call the redeem auto two function and we can also see already what is the token address and the token symbol that we received in exchange. Nice. Could you elaborate more about exchange. what this token name is? Yes, of course. So the TCO2 just stands for carbon token. And then the VCS stands for verified carbon standard. This means also this was created by Vera. So it means this token comes from the Vera registry. The number 1052 is here the project ID. And 2012 is the year the credit was created. So it that's the vintage. Nice. Okay, cool. We created our first redeem. What is next? Next, we want to retire this token, this TCO2. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a second function that we're going to call retire TCO2. It will be again an async function with no return value. And the function that we're going to call is called token.retire. And it again takes two inputs. But before we're going to call it, we want to check that we have a TCO2 to address because that's one of the inputs so you're going to check tco2 address link and then we're going to call the function it's an async function though so we're going to say wait token dot retire the first input is the amount of tokens we want to retire so we'll say path ether one ton we're going to retire one ton and then we want to input our tco2 address right that was so quick right yes <laughs> And now we're going to create the second button that we're just going to call test retire and we're going to call the retire function. And right now for this tutorial, we're going to use the retire function, but there's also other options that the token SDK offers you. Like you could call the retire from function where you can retire from another address. That is very useful if you would do that for an organization, an NGO, for example. And you could also immediately mint a certificate when you call would call token.retire and mint certificate. But we're just going to retire. And you can also always mint your certificate later. So that's not going to be an issue. So yeah, we're done, right? Just retire. And then we can retire our token. And now the token is retired and it will be reference to your address and everybody will be able to see it and nobody can use this carbon credit anymore you can see which contract you interacted with so everybody will be able to get information on the project of the token that you retired from right okay so okay. we're done with the first part perfect so now we want to show people our retirements and for that we're going to interact with the subgraph and for that let's just create a new page we will create a list of all our retirements so let's create a page that we call list.tsx also let's add it to the header so everybody can find it first we're gonna get the token client again and this time when we initialize it we don't need to set a provider so you can just say token it's like token client with alcohol because we want to get the specific retirements of a user we will also have to use get the address of the current user for that we use the user account hook from what library and then we also already create our state for the retirement so we can sh later show them in the list so we're just going to call it retirements and it will be an area 
So now we can just create a function and here we will first store our return value in the variable that we're going to call result. And then before we call the function, we check that we have the address. And very important, always lowercase the address, otherwise you will get an empty result because the subgraph is case sensitive. So now we can call the function. So we say await token dot fetch user retirement and as input we're going to use the current address sweet and now we're going to just check if we have a result and store that result in this in the retirements now we also want to call that function whenever the page is created we can just create a little table nesta did you prepare a cute beautiful table for us today i did actually <laughs> So I'm going to put the table that we created, and then we're going to explain the table. Yes. So what is happening here is just simple table in CSS styling. And we want to put the token name, a token symbol, the certificate ID, and the creation transaction. Okay. So let's check it out. You can see the token name, the token symbol. And you can also see the creation transaction. And now, Nesta, if you click on it, we can see what we saw before, a successful retirement. So yeah, I hope you learned a lot today about carbon retirements today, Nesta. Do you have any other questions for me? Indeed. Thank you so much for this coding session, Lena. It was awesome. So where can developers learn more about building with Toucan on Cello and how they can reach you for further questions? Great question, Esther. So first of all, of course, our documentation under developer docs, you will find all information on our smart contract, also our subgraphs, and you can check out our SDK. There's also going to be a tutorial link to this in this video. And otherwise, if you want to reach us, if you have any more questions, please check out Toucan's Discord and reach out to us in the Builders General or in the Dev Channel. Also, you can always reach out to me on all social medias under my name, Giga Hits. Looking forward to all your questions. Okay, okay, that would be all. Thank you so much, yeah. Lena. Thank you so much, Nesta. This was so much fun.